Hi, everyone. Did you all have a nice five minute break? <laughs> you made it. You did it. You've almost made it. You have to listen to a couple more people talk, and then we get to go to a fun party at the Museo de las Americas. Um, okay, so I want to start off. Is everyone settled? I'm ready? Okay, great. <laughs> I want to start off by saying thank you to Amelia. She's actually not even here right now because she's already setting up at the Museo with her entire family. They have been so kind in Denver. And if you look at the program, the special thanks, that's all her family. They have been on the ground helping with whatever they can. They are bartending. They are taking over tables to the Museo. So if you see them, please tell them thank you. They have been nothing but kind um, and just helping us and volunteering. And it's been a true... Um, showcase of what a common space movement is. Yeah, give it up for them. Uh, thank you to the programming and the selection committee. Yeah, give it up for them. I joined the LTC almost a year ago this month. However, they have been working on this for many years and they've stuck through it through a pandemic and to make it to this weekend. So I'm really appreciative of all of you and so thankful for showing up to the meetings, whether they were during your work day or late at night. Um, and it wouldn't have happened without each and every one of you. And even I emailed selection committee members uh, last week saying, hey, if someone comes down with COVID, can I put you on stage? And a lot of them eagerly said, yes, whatever you need. And so I am eternally grateful for you all. No one had to go on stage, surprisingly, except for Richard and Daniel. <laughs> So props to them also. Um, and I want to say thank you to the entire Su Teatro team. Yeah. They have been helping us out here. And at nighttime, they have their own show, Chicano Sing the Blues, and they also have to run their own theater company. Um, Arnold, who's up there, has been doing our tech all week. Thank you, Arnold. And he's been, he was joined by Gwilym today, so thank you, Gwilym, as well. And yeah, everyone you see who's been helping out set up food, um, cleaning the theater, is part of the team here. And so please, um, please tell them thank you when you see them, hopefully, later tonight. Um, I want to say one more thank you to Tony and Mika, who have been so lovely. They literally, they can do it all. They can do it all, and they have kept Amelia and myself alive. They just show up, and they're like, we have food for you. We know you haven't eaten. And they sneak us away. Yeah, no, it's really, really beautiful, and I've had the best week here. And I'm sad to be leaving, but I'm so grateful to have started this partnership and to be continuing it um, after this. Yeah. Um, okay, so now I'm going to ask you all some questions. Because we started with questions, and now you've had time to reflect, hopefully. And so um, first one is, who is going to forward a script from one of our readings or in your flash drive to a colleague? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. OK. Who is going to convince the Latinx artistic directors who are not here to produce one of these shows in their future seasons? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Already, Abigail says, already done. I'm eager to hear about that. OK, who has a better understanding of what a commons is after these three days? Oh my gosh, amazing, you guys. I love it. Um, who wants to join the steering committee? <laughs> OK, that's amazing. Great. Email me, Jacqueline at HowlRound.com. We'll get you started. Okay, now I have a very important question. Who is interested in producing a play they saw this weekend in one of their future seasons? Okay, wait, 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 wait. Put you, keep your hand up. Keep your hand up if you put it up. Okay, I see Amy. Amy from Actors Theater of Louisville. Can you tell us what play you're interested in producing? Okay, Amy's interested in producing... La Egoista by Erlina Ortiz at Actors Theater of Louisville. 
Andrew. Lago East at Cleveland Playhouse. Okay. Tony. La Carpa de las Fronteras, directed by Samuel Valdez at Su Teatro. Okay, who else had their hand up? Yes. Egoista and Exhaustion. Okay, anybody else? Y'all are going to have to fight for these. <laughs> Happily, he says. You can, you can do a co-pro. Patrice? The Invocation of Selena. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I support that as a fellow Tejana. Okay, well, these artists are going to be expecting emails from you all now that you've said it out loud. And it's recorded, so I will hold you to it. <laughs> I hope you all enjoyed this weekend. I hope you have fun tonight. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit later about uh, what will what will be uh, what food we will be having and um, the vendors and all of that for closing ceremonies, not for closing ceremonies for our after party. Um, but right now, I want to introduce uh, Evelina Fernandez. <laughs> who has a sorpresita for us. I know, get excited. Hello. I'm so happy to be up here. Thank you so much, Jacqueline, for, I guess I'm a little bit taller. <laughs> so much, um, Jacqueline, for inviting me to be part of this program and to be introducing the Diane Rodriguez Teatrista Award. <laughs> uh, Diane and um, Jose Luis and I uh, go way, way back. And so I hope I don't cry. And Jose Luis will probably cry. He cries all the time. <laughs> um, but for those of you who did not know Diane, the Diane Rodriguez Teatrista Award, the Diane, is the Latinx Theater Commons first award dedicated to an individual working in the theater field who's committed to increasing Latinx representation across all disciplines. With this award, the LTC aims to continue the legacy of Diane Rodriguez, 1951 to 2020. An award, oh shit. <laughs> An award winning multi-hyphenate theater artist who tirelessly advocated for other artists and opened doors for future leaders in the field. <clears throat> in, 2018, in a 2018 interview with the National Endowment for the Arts, Diane reflected, I think that humor is the biggest weapon to change people's minds. Therefore, announcing this award at the 2022 LTC Comedy Carnaval honors Diane's own work in comedy through Latin's Anonymous, Culture Clash, and her own plays. The inaugural award recipient was selected by a group of seven nominators, including Amelia Acosta Powell, Jacqueline Flores, Anne Garcia Romero, Lisa Portes, Jose Luis Valenzuela, Abigail Vega, and Karen Zacarias. In subsequent years, the LTC will seek applicants who are nominated by peers and colleagues throughout the field. And award recipients will be selected by an appointed committee. Uh, I talked to JD, Diane's um, husband, about this award. And he also said he would like to be involved later on. With this approach, we aim to amplify Diane's spirit of generosity and her commitment to empowering fellow artists throughout her remarkable career. Diane Rodriguez served on the LTC's advisory committee for six years. The Diane Rodriguez Teatrista Award recipient will receive 
$5,000 of a $5,000 unrestricted grant. Yeah, so I wanted to, just so you can know a little bit more about Diane's essence, I wanted to share something that I wrote about Diane at uh, a beautiful memorial that we had for her at the Center Theater Group in Los Angeles. <clears throat> so bear with me. And no voy a chiar, I swear. <laughs> I knew you, sister. And you knew me. My red lips and hoops, sister. I wear black, but you like color, sister. My Chicano theater, sister my aspirational sister, my inspirational sister, my ambitious sister, my let me through the door sister, my I'll find another way in and I'll take you with me sister, my trailblazing sister, you made your beautiful mark sister, a mark that crossed borders and genres, a beautiful scar, we run our fingers over and remember the battles, the struggles, the hope, and the laughter. My interior designer sister, you made a beautiful home sister. My stylish sister, my playwright sister, my costume designer sister, my comedian sister, my director sister, my they won't let me direct here. Fuck it, I'll go direct somewhere else, sister. <laughs> my mentor, sister. My childless but mother to hundreds, sister. My elegant sister. My beautiful indigenous sister. My we're both bochas, sister. My I, sister. <laughs> My cholas forever y que, sister. <laughs> we didn't say goodbye, sister. You came to see La Virgen and called out my name. I would have chatted longer. I would have held you tighter. I would have thanked you for all the love, sister. My por vida, sister. My si se puede, sister. Si se pudo, sister. Soar through the heavens, sister. I'll catch you on the other side. So I have the honor of presenting the inaugural Diane Rodriguez Teatrista Award to Patricia Garza. I feel like I'm at the Oscars. Patricia's not here to accept the award. <laughs> but we have a video that's gonna play now. Or should I read her bio first? Okay. Um, so here's a little bit about Patricia, who's amazing. She's amazing. Um, one of uh, Diane's mentees for many, many years. Patricia is the producer and director of Los Angeles programs at Los Angeles Performance Practice, LAPP, supporting the production and presentation of contemporary performance. Before joining LAPP, they served as the director of programs and engagement at the Network of Ensemble, Ensemble Theaters, NET, overseeing pro programmatic activities and marketing communications and has now shifted into the role of NETTEN program director, continuing to manage NET's Cornerstone Grant Program. A former member of the artistic staff at Center Theater Group for over a decade, Patricia filled roles spanning artistic education and community par partnership and management. Patricia had the honor 
of working alongside CTG Associate Artistic Director Diane Rodriguez for six years. Together, they engaged world-renowned international and local companies on multi-year projects focused on collective and ensemble creation. Patricia frequently speaks at public events, facilitates group conversations, and has served as a grant panelist for the NEA Los Angeles Department of Cultural Affairs. They got to give us more money. <laughs> and, and the Los Angeles County Department of Arts and Culture, among others. Patricia's passion is working with other theater professionals nationally, nationally on issues surrounding anti-racism towards collective liberation with a focus on the LGBTQIA plus community through art equity. Patricia has an MFA, MBA in theater management from Cal, Cal State Long Beach and a BA in English with a minor in theater studies from UC Berkeley. They reside in Tongva Keach land known as the East Los, uh, known as East Los Angeles, <laughs> with their wife and two adorable dogs. Okay, here's Buffy. Thank you all so much. I've taken a brief break from COVID <laughs> to be with you on video because I couldn't be there with you tonight. Um, I just wanna thank the committee for this amazing award that Diane, so fabulous, um, and being the first recipient, it's just so special to me. Um, I was uh, on the phone with Karen, she was texting me about the award, and I instantly kind of started tearing up, which if you know me is pretty rare. Um, some of it might be the day quill that I was, <laughs> I've been chugging for the last couple of days, but mostly, what a deep honor. What a deep honor to have any association, any alignment with our Diane. I worked alongside Diane for six years. We shared an office among many other years doing projects together. And her laughter, her creativity, her advocacy for our community just radiated the hallway, radiated our room. Um, I always could look forward to her smiles. And she would always say, make sure you're having fun. Make sure this is still fun. So I'll offer that to you all today. Um, she also would always say, you know, we have to make opportunities for one another. So if the front door isn't open, we're gonna knock on every side door, we're gonna crack open windows for one another, and we're gonna bring each other along. So I always have taken that to heart and I've really tried to manifest that in my own leadership. Um, recently I was having dinner with Diane's husband, JD, and he asked me, um, Really provocative question, kind of really sincerely, and said, "What lessons um, has Diane left you with?" And um, I sat there for a while, and I kind of said, "At the end of the day, it really boiled down to believing in yourself and having that confidence that you belong here. We have so much to contribute into this field." Um, and she really saw that in me, and she took a big chance. She saw really you know, bumbling young professional and invited um, me into her fold and mentored me along the way. And I am the producer, the arts administrator, the creative I am because of her. Um, so believe in yourself. Um, everybody deserves to have fun and to do this job with joy. And that's what Diane is leaving me with. So I pledge to you all to do the best for our community. Um, my dog is agreeing with me in the background here. <laughs> and thank you so much for this deep, deep honor. I wish I could be there and give you all lots of hugs. Um, but hopefully, when I feel better, we can see one another again. Thank you so much. Have a great rest of your time there. Um, Diane touched so many people. Um, she was a mentor to so many people. Um, so we want to give an opportunity to anybody who would like to come up and give some besitos to Diane. If anybody wants to come up. Don't judge yourself. 
Just come up here. Come on. <laughs> I'll warm you all up. Um, I didn't know Diane very well, but I did get to meet her at the 2016 TPG conference. I was a uh, eager theater college student, and I had just read her play Sweetheart Deal, and I found her on the TCG app that tells you who's coming, and I messaged her, and I was like, hi, I'm doing a research paper on Latinx theater, and I just read your play. Um, can I interview you? And she messaged me back. And she said, yes, of course, here's my number. How did you find my play? Um, and so I arrived at TCG and got to interview her for my research paper. And she knew I was there alone. And so she took me to take notes at a board meeting for TCG. And then one day, she took me to breakfast with the Latinx Theater Commons before uh, they accepted an award at the TCG conference. And so if it wasn't for her, I wouldn't have felt welcomed at that conference. And I would have never found out about DLT. And so I'm very grateful for the impact she's made in my life. And I wish I would be able to tell her that in person. My experience with uh Diane goes back to 1975, and I was lucky. Uh, I got to see Teatro Campesino, <coughs> excuse me, doing La Carpa de los Arcoaches. And uh, they were coming into town to perform by the guys who actually started this theater. But we were fortunate, I don't know if this is fortunate, they needed a place to stay, and we opened up, we were all a bunch of guys, a bunch of students living in a house together, and we agreed to give them our bedrooms and sleep on the floors. So Teatro Campesino spent two weeks with us. And in that time, we were fortunate to be mentored by, by JD as well, but a Diane in particular. Uh, and we went through the projects and performed out in the street along with Teatro Campesino. And our roots all the way went all the way back to there, very much like Jose Luis and Evelina. We were fortunate to be able to catch up periodically in that arc we all share as a generation. So I see Diane as not only an inspiration to the work that we did, but an inspiration of a generation. Uh, Diane. Uh, I met Diane in um, 92, Alida. Uh, we were second cast of Latin Anonymous. And uh, we, it was, of course, uh, an amazing, life-changing experience for her. She was our director and, of course, the writer. And we continued to work together uh, years and years after that. Uh, one of the most profound and just amazing uh, things that happened uh, with us is that um, she was telling me about her friend, Andres Gutierrez, uh, who was a, a member, of course, original member of Teatro Campesino. And, and she was talking about how uh, she's got to go visit his mom, Tilly, and his sister, Helen. And I said, Tilly and Helen? I'm like, on Oklahoma Street? And she goes, yes. And I said, I live on Oklahoma Street. That's my house. So Andres was my sister's best friend in high school. And was Diane's dearest friend, of course, during the Capucino days. And we just immediately uh, found that connection. And together, uh, through, through that connection, and speaking to Andres, and speaking to family, and we just kind of became family. Uh, and I just love the fact that uh, we were connected professionally and connected through history and memories. And um, every year, I lived in New York for many years, and every year, you know, she'd come and call me and say, "Hey, let's go see theater. Let's go see this. JD's coming, or Deborah's coming, or Luis is coming." She always made time. For me, 
and uh, I'm grateful to her and uh, forever and ever. Thanks to you, love you, Diane. Well, I'm not used to speaking in front of people. Um, I got encouraged by our friend Evelina to say, don't judge yourself, so I'm here um, to give testimony, which is similar to Jacqueline's, but back in, 19, in the mid-'80s, when she and Luis Alfaro were at the Mark Taper Forum, and I was a graduate student at UC Irvine, and <laughs> I didn't know anything. And um, she was very kind and um, welcoming and really embraced um, me as a graduate student at the time and uh, really opened my doors, you know, in terms of a researcher saying, you know, you can't just be sitting out there being a scholar. You have to get in here in the theater and you have to really see what's, what's going on in the theater as, as a scholar, but also have empathy and understanding of the artistic process. So before I start the crying too, um, I'm very grateful to Diane. I probably have known, you know, probably knew Diane the least well. I met Diane in Boston at the first Phoenix Theater Commons convening in 2013. She was just bigger than life all the time. This amazing smile, this amazing laugh, always dressed to the nines and gorgeous and stunning, and those beautiful hoops and that stunning red lipstick. And she was also at one time uh, president of the board of, at TCG. And I had a very uncomfortable conversation with a white colleague who uh, I had mentioned that I wanted to be on the TCG board, and he had been on the TCG board, and he said, well, that's never gonna happen. You have too small a theater, nobody knows who you are. It's not, just, they're not gonna choose you. And I was like, well, fuck you. <laughs> and so I was like, well, how do I go about this? And I thought, well, if I have a recommendation from a former president of TCG, and they still say no, then that's not an organization I really care about. And so I called Diane, and she, of course, wrote a glowing recommendation. And I serve on that board today because of her and her desire to pass on <laughs> and lift us up and elevate us. So continue to do that. And I love you. Um, I just want to acknowledge Diane was like, you know, mentor, mother to a lot. She's like mother to hundreds. And took a really, um, like, like special interest in specifically Latina producers. And, you know, was like kind of mean and hard on us sometimes. Like a good way, I mean. Um, but I'm going to tell a funny story because I don't want to get too sad. Um, so I've known Diane since I was 22. When I was in my mid-20s, I was really lucky and fortunate and probably just, um, it was probably a mistake, honestly, on a form. And I got to um, go with a bunch of people and be in the US delegation to the Santiago Amil Festival in Santiago, Chile. And, uh, you know, didn't know folks there, and she always took us under her arm and was like, let's go to dinner, let's go here. Let me make sure that you're seen with me so that people will then come talk to you. So um, this, <laughs> she was on this panel, and it was um, with all these US um, artistic directors and associate artistic directors, and there was this one <sighs> white managing director who's still, uh, who has his job, and he was just, turn off the live stream today. So he was just, um, he was just saying all this crazy shit, like totally crazy racist things, and Diane was just sitting there and just, yes, and yeah, oh, mm -hmm. And she would, you know, t t take him in, and, and she would turn his words to, did you really mean to say, blah, 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 blah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And so then later in the trip, we, uh, as a group, as a U.S. delegation, we went to um, Pablo Neruda's house, and they like, you know, we went on a tour bus and we like, you know, it was so beautiful and this, and we, they took us to this restaurant and we had this meal and this artistic director um, says to somebody in the group, um, can you translate for them? This food here is too greasy. I want some French fries. Oh. And Diane was like, no, she was like, I, I, she just, she just had her eyes and she goes, and they translated it and somehow they got French fries for this. 
man who is still employed in the American theater. And, um, and literally, every time I saw Diane after that, she would look at me and she goes, would you like some French fries? <laughs> Um, I was very young when I met Diane for the first time. I was, um, I came in to audition for her for Latin's Anonymous um, for the second performance ever, and she was very proud to be directing her own work, the work of all of them. And uh, I came in to audition, and I was supposed to do a French accent, and instead, I couldn't remember what a French accent sounded like. And I was, I was doing it in my head, and I was doing it in my head, and I was doing it in my head. And instead, I came out with like some crazy combination of like some Russian, Orthodox, Jewish, Irish person. And instead of being really bothered, I think it was my audaciousness that brought me back into the room with her because she was such a powerhouse that when she saw someone else with a strong will, she was willing to pick that person up. And uh, after that performance one night, we were all drinking, shocking. And I said, Diane, if I come to LA, will you help me? And she said, yeah, Mihai, sure will. And she gave me these big, beautiful, huge silver earrings as a parting gift. Two years later, I called her up and I said, Diane, I'm coming, I'm moving to LA. And she said, great, I'll be here. And she got me an internship at the Mark Tabor Forum at the Latino Theater Initiative because change is really slow, right? Because then a lot of change was happening and then the pushback came and now things are beginning to change again, I hope. And that was Diane. She was good to her word. If she told you she was gonna do something, she did it. And even years and years later, I hadn't thought about it. I went on with my crazy life and I'd bump into her once in a while and we'd say hello. But years and years later, I, I sent her a message and I thought, ah, oh, Diane's too busy. She's just too busy. She's not gonna get back to me. Four hours later, I got a message back to her, back from her. Because again, that's who Diane was. She was good to her word. She was a good soul. Gracias. Bye. Um, so I have uh, been around since pretty much the beginning. Um, Boston was the first time uh, that I got to meet so many of the people that are in the room and that are who aren't here today, who I've come to respect and love. Um, but I've always felt a little, for my own, this is my own shit, but always a little on the outside of, of the fabulous people that are part of the LTC. Um, but Diane had a way of making you feel like you were family from the get-go. And I remember at that conference in 213 in Boston, 2013, is that when it was, right, in Boston, living in Boston? And uh, we had these little breakout sections, and um, she, somebody needed to take notes, and, and I, I certainly wasn't going to volunteer. I felt like, you know, I was just happy to be there. You know? And she, she immediately goes, Rich, why don't you take notes? And so I'm taking notes, and, and through that whole thing, she, I felt like she was pushing me to be more than I was, and to, um, and to, she was helping me find my voice in that moment. And uh, I'll never forget that, that moment because in so many ways, it was a reminder that uh, I have a place at the table um, and that she uh, always reminded me of that, including the way she greeted me every time after that that I saw her. And I'm like, how does this lady even know who I am and why does she care? But that's who she was. She saw something in everybody and she brought you along and I'll forever be grateful to her for that and for that reminder that um, we're, we're all, we all have a voice and we all have something to contribute. So, thank you. Uh, 
Um, hi, yeah, so on that same note, um, I didn't know Diane very, very well. Um, I met her once, actually, only once. Um, but uh, it, she made a huge impact on me, so I wanted to share that little anecdote. Um, I went to uh, the LTC Encuentro in LA, and I was new to California. I had just moved to California um, and had gotten a job at Fresno State, where I'm still teaching. Um, and so I was there feeling very vulnerable because I didn't know anybody. Uh, and uh, we were put in a, in a working group together. Uh, and so she asked me who I was. So she asked me for my name. And I, you know, I said, I'm Gina, da, 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 I'm in Fresno. And I saw her taking me in, like memorizing my name. And like, you know, her eyes were just so deep. And she was like making a note of who I was and what I was doing. And I just, I felt, I felt seen. And um, it was very powerful because that was my very first time around all of you. Um, and, and, you know, you feel a little vulnerable and, you know, kind of lost. But she just saw me um, and memorized my name. And then throughout the whole um, event, when I kept running into her, she would, she would say, hi, Gina, right? Like she knew who I was. Um, so even though I only uh, spent very brief time with her, uh, I consider her a sort of a mentor because that was just so powerful to uh, have somebody see you and recognize you and be like, oh, here you are. So I wanted to share that. Thank you. Thank you, Diane. We miss you. I went to her wedding. I went to her wedding. I, I, you know, she was with El Teatro El Esperanza before she was with El Teatro Campesino. And I, I, I'm gonna, I mean, and this is a very long time ago. I don't even remember. I, mean, I, I actually was on diapers with my parents took me to their wedding. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> you know, no, and we had an amazing relationship. She was amazing. She was powerful. I mean, we, we had the Latino Theater Company beginning. That's where Latins and Latinos, meaning we moved to almost at the same time to Los Angeles. She, she was coming from El Teatro Campesino, and we were coming from El Teatro de la Esperanza. So when, uh, when uh, my wife wrote that beautiful uh, poem for her, for her memorial, uh, they asked me to sing for her. It was a very strange ask, but with the song that they wanted me to sing. So, I'll sing a little bit of it for you guys. So, uh, <laughs> no, that's the reason you're here. If you, I don't even know how to play the guitar, but uh, I, I, I think it's in laugh. But it's a song that that. I was going to say, I was going to say that JD is, he requested that Jose Luis sing this song, which is kind of weird because we're like, okay, that's a weird song for, but if you think about it, it really is uh, Diane's essence. So this is the song he sang. Go ahead. So I haven't sang since then. And <laughs> I used no, to sing. I used to sing when I was young with Yolanda, my beautiful Yolanda. Uh, so please help me because I'm not sure that my voice is even going to get there. Yo sé bien que estoy afuera, pero el día en que yo me muera, me tendrás que llorar. Dirás que no me quisiste, pero vas a estar muy triste y así te vas a quedar. Con dinero y sin dinero hago siempre lo que quiero, 
Y mi palabra es la ley. No sabe tocar la guitarra. No tengo trono ni reina, ni nadie que me comprenda, pero sigo siendo el rey. Ah, 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 I thought it, it, it. You know, it is so great. I mean, she was such a leader in the community, a leader in the field, a leader in, in, uh, in you know, yes, for women, for, for Chicanos. For, you know, what was so great about our, the Chicano movement? That we were, before anything, we were Chicanos. And I'm a Mexican from Mexico. I'm one of those who, who actually infiltrated the Chicano movement, okay? But, I mean, thinking about great leaders in the community, Diane, she was a Chicana before she was anything else. And she was for Chicano theater all the time, which was so amazing. Uh, thank you, Tony. Thank you, Tony. You know, Tony, Tony, you know, we know, I was trying to figure out when we met. Uh, he's trying to say that it was in, remember, you remember Yolanda, you guys came to San Jose early on. It may be like 73, 74, but remember, which I, you know, these were Chicanos from Denver coming to California. 76, 76. And they were coming to California, and these people sang all these Mexican songs. And I used to sing when I was young. And I love their singing. But they, Debbie, where is Debbie and Tony? So we will sing all these Mexican songs. Yolanda spoke Spanish. But Debbie and Tony didn't. And I'll say, <laughs> Deborah didn't speak any Spanish. Tony, and that makes the story more interesting. And I was, oh wow, these Chicanos are amazing. Anyway, but you know, so I met Tony. Tony then, uh, and, and, and we were friends since then. We, we came to, to, and I was asking him when we came here for the Chicano, at 76 and a festival, we, we were staying at his house, and you know, he created this amazing uh, center. It's not easy. Don't cry. Oh, it's, it's, it, if you understand what it means, where we come from, for him to say that's not, we are going to own this building. That's awesome. That's what we do for the community, for the artists, for the playwright. And, and it really, it really has, meaning all the work that Tony has done for the last 50 years. It's their 50th anniversary. Most of you were not born yet. Just, <laughs> just think about that. You know, so the leadership that Tony Garcia and you know, and he is a Chicano from Denver. I'm a Mexican from Mexico. So in the friendship that we had created, we compete about who is our best friend, okay? Because I thought I was somebody's best friend, but then he told me he was his best friend, and I go, hey, what's going on? But this, uh, <laughs> so, but you know, it's, it's, as you know, as you know, and you may be not know this, but to, be part of the Chicano movement and be part of the Chicano leadership. If you're not a Chicano, it's tough. And you have to become a Chicano. Because Chicano is not anymore your Mexican-American state of mind. It's how we see the world and how we change the world. And that's what's driven Tony for 50 years. And so we, we, we thank you so much for allowing us to be at your house. And, and being as warm and as strong and as wonderful you are. And, you know, and to continue trying to say, this is what, well, I had this discussion, people, I teach Chicano history at the university, and people are trying to tell me, you know, the Chicanos, and, I, and last night what we saw, those are Chicanos. What we saw last night, is, those are real Chicanos. They, they, you know, that's why they can sing the blues. I can't sing the blues, because I'm a Mexican. <laughs> they can sing the blues. So 
all this, I want to thank you. And, uh, you know, part of this has been us uh, from the committee to come over here to give you an award. Mika, you are being called to the stage. The Latinx Theater Commons would like to present an award to Su Teatro for 50 years of service to the Chicano community. I thought we were talking about Diane. <laughs> I don't even know how that switched. But said we picked the key and then changed the key and then told me to stop. <laughs> that was very fun. That was really reminds you of old times when we all just sang in different keys at the same time. Uh, but I'd like to, you all know Mika, and who is really the one who is running the teatro in here today. Can we say something? Just say a little thank you. We also want to recognize we have Yolanda Ortega here, the La Reina, and Jesse Ogas here from our company members here. So, this is the next 50 years of Su Teatro. Um, <laughs> I just want to say thank you guys all for coming out this week. It's been tremendous. Um, I, I have had our students here, we've had our actors here, and it's a piece to just recognize that, like, the work that happens on a national level, the work that we've done, the teatro, the teatro Chicano community that we've always, that I've been lucky enough to always have um, in my life, to know for my whole life, and to know that any city we went in, any place that there was another teatro, we could go there, and we could, we had familia, and there was nothing else there. We, we were there to help, that we were there to support, that we had familia, and we were always going to be supported in the same way. So I am so thankful that you guys came to our home this year, and we've really had a great time. Thank you so much. Good job, babe. Coaster, I don't know about y'all. <laughs> Should we all take a deep breath? Okay. Breathe in. One, two, three. Breathe out. Thank you. So I'm almost going to let you go. But before I let you go, I have to tell you what the LTC is doing next. So that I can see you there. Um, our next event is a 2023 uh, director and designer Colaboratorio, which will be in Portland, Oregon. And uh, one of our co-champions, Daniel Jaques, is going to tell us a little bit about what the Colaboratorio is. Um, Can I say who Sure. <laughs> okay, um, thank you for sticking out. So um, next year we'll be doing this collaboratorio that's uh, labeled right now Director Designer uh, Colaboratorio, and I'm going to try to propose a change for it to be Designer Director. I'm a director, but the purpose is to explore new ways of, of seeing the collaboration process, to deconstruct the, 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 the way it's been done all the time, at least to explore it to see how we do this, um, uh, let's change the name. Can we do that? Yeah. Uh, so we're going to get together in Portland for a long weekend. There's going to be about 35 people, uh, directors and designers of all uh, generations, of all experiences. And we're going to have workshops, classes, uh, see shows, uh, explore venues. 
and, and explore texts. We don't know if we're going to bring new plays in or plays that are already proven to work so the designers and the directors can actually sing their teeth without having to figure out what the, um, it's a different shop. It's a, there are different shops that we develop. And one of the pillars for the, T, for the LTC is craft. So hopefully we can uh, get together, uh, get a great programming committee together and uh, great selection. So be prepared to uh, start volunteering for next year in June. Leave your schedules open. In June? We don't have a month. Oh, we don't have a month. That's probably because we don't have a space. Uh, <laughs> we've been reaching out to several several theater companies. Uh, Roy Arauz, right? Roy Arauz was, uh, started this with an idea, like he wanted to be in somebody else's room to see their designer director collaboration to see how, how that grew. And, and, um, and Tara, uh, Tara Houston, uh, she jumped in the idea and, and took co-leadership on this. And, um, and it's been great. I was the last, the last co-champion to, to join them. So I'm, I'm, I'm very excited and I'm trying to follow their lead. But once you get these creative people in the room, uh, there's so many ways these, these collaborations can go. And, and try to find out what we actually want to do, what the system has told us to do, and, and who is the lead artist, for example. Who can bring a piece to the table? Um, so there's a lot of things that we're going to explore. The interesting thing is that we're going to have several groups working on different projects, and then we'll collaborate and learn from them. Um, uh, we're still, we, have, we have several meetings we want to go. <laughs> yeah, we're still building committees, so once again, my email is Jacqueline at HowlRoom.com. Okay, so now we're going to head to the Museo de las Americas for a fiesta, and we have uh, some amazing vendors. We have Las Cazuelas and El Cubanazo food trucks. We also have um, drinks. Uh, of all sorts, and then we will be having yummy cupcakes from Lala's Bakery. So y'all can head over there in a few minutes. It's being set up as we speak. There's going to be a DJ. Um, we're there until 9.30, so have fun, and then at 9.30, take the fun elsewhere. <laughs> but thank y'all so much for coming out this weekend. It's been a blast. I hope you've enjoyed yourself. I hope you've had fun. I hope you've learned. And I hope you've met some new people, and if you haven't yet, please introduce yourself to someone new, and we'll see you next year in Portland. <laughs>